Consider a local law amending bulk pickup, which is scheduled for August 21st, 2017 at 7 p.m. at Village Hall. I should make a motion. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, second is a public hearing to consider a local law amending the parking regulations in the village's downtown area. Also scheduled for the first hearing for August 21st, 2017 at 7 p.m. at Village Hall. I will make a note that uh, we anticipate keeping that open. Well, we'll definitely keep it open until September, but uh, possibly longer because um, we are changing about 22 pages of regulations by my count, maybe 21, um, but many, many pages. Uh, most of it's cleanup, but there are some substantive changes as well. So we want to make sure everyone understands them uh, and we can get the, uh, the best fix to the parking regulations, which uh, I know we went 60 years without fixing the reassessments and Greenberg did that. So I think this might be 100 years of, of parking issues that we're finally addressing. So. Um, we're going to probably have multiple public hearings on that, but the first of them is August 21st at 7 p.m. So I'll make a motion for that. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor. All right. Um, next is, did you want to briefly discuss with the, uh, the bulk pickups fairly straightforward? I mean, do you want to quickly give a, a little background? Like oh, Larry. Or Larry. Actually, the bulk pickup was Larry. Okay. He's too busy with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just distracted, that's all. <laughs> Um, so the, the uh, we've been looking for uh, the, the board has had a request in the past about um, having a fee implemented for bulk pickup uh, for a variety of reasons that have been recommended to the board. Um, so we are looking to uh, implement that fee through a local law. The fee is relatively modest, probably on the order of twenty-five dollars or so, whatever the board decides to set. Uh, and it would be based on an individual pickup, not individual items. So not, not getting too complicated with it. So we, we're not going to count tables and chairs and all that. We're going to count one pickup at one time, and that's what the fee applies to. Yeah, and I, and I think the way we view it, too, is not necessarily, um, you know, it's not a revenue generator. It's more getting people to think about recycling, uh, reusing, that, that type of thing. Sharing and whatnot. Yeah. So that's that one. Do you want to quickly do uh, 22 pages of parking in uh, <laughs> 22 months? You know, Larry, Larry and I talked a little bit about that. To go through, to go through no. them one by one makes no sense. It'll just glaze over. Um, so what Larry um, was planning to do, I guess we'll work on it together, is summarize what the, what the substantive changes are. We made these areas to our parking list there. Put that document along with the actual changes on there, um, and, and, and then that way people can look up their own street and you know see how it's affected, how it's affecting their street. In short, the regulations only um, um, are uh, for the downtown area, I guess, except to double parking. We <laughs> going through and updating the thing. We happen to find this one section that said. No double parking on like 12 streets downtown, which means you could double park anywhere else in the village. It's very cute. So other than that, it doesn't affect the entire village. Now you can't double park anywhere. So, um, uh, and well, as a matter of fact, you couldn't. The police wouldn't allow it. So, so I think those two things would be on an overall explanation that Larry's been working on, and and then and the law will be published in. Can just and um. Publishing both the clean version and the, the change. On a local law change, you show, um, you cross out what's been eliminated, you put the new stuff in italics so you can see what the change was over the last one. What, it hap what happened on this, though, then ended up being, I think, I think Brian said 
22 pages where the clean copy was less than half of that, was much shorter. So you can see how the changes were made, but then you can also read how it will be. So it will be free. And there's some, there's some time um, before the board's going to vote on this. Session. So plenty of time for review. Thank you. Uh, next is a check over $25,000. Um, which is a new fire chief vehicle. Um, the vendor is the Neuer Chevrolet for 2017 Chevy Tahoe uh, from the capital budget. The total amount is $39,188 uh, per our policy. Just want to let everyone know. Um, then two other quick announcements that I have to add. Uh, first, today is actually the 20, 21st anniversary of the O'Hara tragedy. Um, mm -hmm. The O'Hara's, they, they obviously lost. Uh, a father, a, a mother, and a, and a, and a daughter in a, in a tragic uh, plane accident. Um, I think the positive thing to come out of it is for the last 21 years, we've remembered them almost every day here in Irvington. Uh, the O'Hara Foundation that came out of that tragedy has been probably the most steadfast partner of the Irvington Rec Department. Um, they've had many events of their own um, that they posted. We've, uh, we also have the O'Hara Nature Center, which bears their name after a large donation. So. A lot of great has come out of something that was so tragic 21 years ago today. In some ways, it seems much, you know, it doesn't seem like 21 years to me, that's for sure. But uh, we just want to have a, a quick remembrance of that today. Um, uh, finally, let me just add that um, quite a number of residents have also given a lot of their time and their effort as part of the O'Hara Foundation to honor them. Um, you know, people spend a lot of time volunteering um, through, through a number of the initiatives, not just the Iron Nature Center, uh, the basketball tournaments, and a lot of things that are behind the scenes. Uh, so again, a compliment to our resident volunteers as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And my last announcement is that um, Rocktoberfest is back on this year. It's on um, October 14th, and uh, Joe Artino and we were we're kind of reorganizing face at the same time. So uh, Joe actually raised his hand and said that he'd be willing to chair it to keep things moving. Um, we're probably about a month behind schedule, uh, but we're catching up quickly now. So uh, we have expect another great day down in Madison Park. Uh, same kind of schedule as before, you know, 2 p.m. to about 9 p.m. Bunch of bands, a uh, bunch of food carts, food trucks, um, as well as, uh, you know, beer from local breweries and that sort of thing. So it should be another great day, but uh, just wanted to quickly give an update on that as well. And uh, if I had to mention, I think, I believe today was, remember it was yesterday, World Emoji Day? <laughs> I, I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 World Emoji Day. Day. <laughs> it's World Emoji Day. It's World Okay, very important. Uh, the most interesting thing I saw was Someone, uh, one of the museums was um, tweeting out um, descriptions of uh, artwork using, you know, or artists using just emojis to describe the work, which is, I guess, fun. <laughs> There's so many now that I don't even know what they stand for. All the different faces. Hello? And I should never find the one I want. No, exactly. There's too many now. That's all I have for announcements. So if anyone else has anything. Otherwise, I'll move on to correspondence. Of the six pieces of correspondence, five of them for leaf blowers, so I will hold them over uh, until we get to the leaf blower uh, public hearing. Um, but I will read the other one, which was Tom Jackson's letter. Uh, Dear Mayor Smith and members of the board, as you may know, since late November, our board has only had two members. The, uh, this is regarding Environmental Conservation Board. As you may know, since late November, our board has only had two members. We wrote to the mayor and corresponded with Larry Shalford to request that the vacancies on our board be filled. Larry wrote this in December that the full Board of Trustees was aware of the issue and was trying to address it but had no immediate solutions. We have convened every month since as a two-member board. It is apparent that with only two members we cannot function effectively as a volunteer board. Both members need to be present to constitute a quorum. If one member is unavailable, we cannot convene. In the past, having a larger board provided an opportunity to exchange differing points of view among the members and draw upon their knowledge and expertise. Although our board may have had, although our board may have had up to nine members, we found that we could function effectively with five. Each, each of us, as you know, has been a volunteer for the village for well over 30 years. The board's made significant contributions and has an important role in the planning process. We believe it's important that the board continues to fill that role. For now, we will need to suspend until, until at least two or three appointments are made to fill the vacancies. 
We hope that you will, this will occur in the near future. Very truly yours, Thomas G. Jackson, Chair, Irvington Environments Conservation Board. Um, I think we're planning on maybe having them in to discuss it, or we're, we're working on a plan. Um, whether it's going to be the same board or, or a different board when we come out of the, the plan, uh, that's to be determined. But um, we are aware of it, and we are working on it. Uh, so I will move to public comment. That isn't related to any of the, to the public hearing. Anybody has anything? Uh, I'm Grandpa Weber, and we have two out-of-towners here. I'm Kevin from uh, Jaffrey Park, and this is Ryan. Just say hello. Uh, hello. Ryan. Say hello, Grandma. Hello, Grandma. <laughs> well, these are Connie's two of Connie's five grandchildren. Well, welcome. Right. Thank, you. Thank you for participating in public comment. For the record. For the record. Any additional public comment? Any other relatives would like to say hello? <laughs> <laughs> what does Connie really like? <laughs> <laughs> um, consent agenda. Have any, have anyone have any questions or comments on the consent agenda? Bye, guys. <laughs> that's a protest the consent agenda. <laughs> cool. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she doesn't deserve a mention of her. You're not related by blood. No, she's, she's not. Uh, <laughs> that's lovely Kate Hanna, Michael Hanna's <laughs> daughter. She's my friend. I will make a motion to approve the consent agenda and Larry's birthday wishes. Yes. <laughs> second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Yeah. Aye. Whatever. Next, we will uh, reconvene the public hearing to consider a local law amending the village code to provide the appeals from architectural review board decisions are made to. No, this is this is new. This yeah, is, yeah. I will make a motion to open the public hearing to consider a local law amending the village code to provide that appeals from the architectural review board decisions are made to the board of trustees. Got a second? second. All in favor? Aye. It's uh, public hearing is now open. Did you want to give a little background on this? Well, that's about it. Um, <laughs> right, right now, um, ARB decisions um, accept uh, regarding demolitions in the historic district go to the zoning uh, um, right. board of appeals. Uh, and the board, when it was um, consuming the historic district, thought about making all appeals relating to the historic district come to the Board of um, uh, Trustees because you just enacted the design guide and then we can keep and then and then it just seemed to make sense that uh, CBA chairperson suggested and it made sense to the board then then just have all appeals from the ARB come to the Board of Trustees. There aren't many. There aren't there aren't many appeals from the ARB. Usually you know usually things work out but I mean I'd be surprised if there were more than a couple of years. So so it means that you're not changing um, the work of the CPA very much, and not increasing the work very much. So, so we're not being had I mean, that's basically it. We, I did correspond um, at your request with the zoning board, uh, members of the zoning board, and um, they did ask for just the rationale behind this, which I think Marianne basically summarized, which is, you know, that since the appeals, the, the board felt it necessary and important for them to keep the appeals from decisions involving the historic <coughs> district uh, to your <coughs> that, you know, given that stance, it makes sense to be consistent and have all appeals go to you. So it's, it's easier for the applicant, frankly. And then the, 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 the um, amendment also says what the, you know, what, what, what the procedure is that the um, Board of Appeals will have a public hearing on it and uh, what the notice is and stuff. And, and to me, I, I, I honestly I didn't think of taking all of them just because that never changed. But once the, you know, the zoning board chair suggested it and we thought about it, it seemed to make sense because I think a lot of the time the, the ARB, we have our ARB chair here, um, it isn't as black and white as, 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 say, some planning things where there's kind of like, you know, it, it, there's, there's to me more subjectivity to some of the ARB things. And I think it's more appropriate that. It, not that the BOT is necessarily softer, but in my opinion, it kind of is. It's not as black and white. It doesn't. We don't refer back just to the law book. You know, it, 
it's it's kind of the spirit of it and, and the totality of things. And you know, uh, I think the historic district um, guidelines is a great example where you have to really weigh cost with historic district preservation. And there's a lot of things that you can't necessarily quantify in a in a law that you can always point to and say, you know, you it upheld the law, you didn't uphold the law. There's there's just too many moving parts for that. So it's it's just more subjective, I think, on the appeal where the ARB kind of deals much more in black and white. I mean, that's exactly what I have to do. The ZBAs really, for the most part, are things like, uh, you know, coverage and uh, setback kind of variances. So they're very quantitative, although there may be some aspects to it that are, in fact, uh, interpretive in terms of judgments as to the impact of such things. Um, but. Like you say, a lot of the other, a lot of stuff uh, that the ARB is dealing with uh, is, for want of a better word, more subjective or has a different set of criteria, and so I think that's important. In yep. and, I, and I think a lot of the criteria is set by the you know, board of trustees. I mean, again, the historic district is the most recent example, but it's kind of the spirit of the law as well as the you know the actual facts of the law. That's solar uh, panels too. Solar mm -hmm. panels as well. Yeah. I mean, I think the key thing here is that in the discussion about the historic design guide, you were, as a board, you were very clear that you intended it to be used a certain way, so clear that you made a very elaborate resolution which will appear in the front of the design guide. So you want to make sure that it's being used the right way. And one of the ways that you can monitor that is by receiving the appeals from that. So if you start to see a trend of it not being used as intended, or I mean, I'm just making stuff up. But you can be close to the issue and be monitoring that uh, very closely. So once you made, you took that stance, then it, it just makes sense for the applicant or anyone who may appeal to have one place to go rather than this kind of fractured, um, fractured process. So that was, that was really where a lot of this came from. Anyone else up here or should we um, open it up to the public? Um. I'm totally comfortable with this um, appeal situation or the change that we're proposing. Um, it's actually been discussed for a while. Um, it's not just a spur of the moment kind of thing. So um, I'm not happy to. I'm very happy to hear anybody from the community. But I certainly, at this point, feel supportive of passing the resolution. Anyone from the public like to speak about this issue? And we, we didn't hear back from anyone in the ZBA that there's no response to sad to lose their. I mean, assume well. the ARB is happy. Yeah, I mean, I discussed it with them. We had no negative feedback from any of the members. That's, that's good. So if there's no further or any public comment, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Do have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now I will. Uh, Make a motion to appear. Under the, uh, resolution. The resolution. Whereas, let's see, what page is that? Just a motion to adopt. Okay. I'll we'll make a motion to to amend the village code to provide that appeals from the ARB decisions are to be made to the board of trustees. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> I was like, uh oh, I've lost it before. Do you guys have anything about when it's effective or anything? Or Did you just when it's filed with the state? I, could, I can't find the page of it in here, but maybe there's so many pages here. He does a whole bunch of videos with the community. No, I have a page of it. This wasn't a, uh, I don't think we have one necessarily for the, uh, for the, uh, there's no budget that we can make it out. No, isn't this it? Amend to provide that appeals from ARB decisions are. Yeah, but it's not like an actual amendment. Oh, it's not a resolution. Oh, yes, here it is. Okay. This is but I don't see the resolution. This is the whole thing. There is a lot. You did it. You did it. We're done. Um, we will we will continue. It was your birthday. You're all distracted. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we're continuing the public hearing to consider a local law amending Chapter 148 nu nuisances of the Irvington Code to limit the least use of leaf blowers. Um, so we're done with the other one, right? Yes. Okay. We voted and we're good. So the public hearing is, is still open. Uh, 
I think we've now publicly spoken about this one. I can't even count the amount of meetings, a uh, half dozen at least, I'd say. Um, we've we've had uh, received a fair amount of feedback. Uh, I, I'd say not even a fair amount. I'd say a, a great amount of feedback, uh, both, both verbal, written, email. Um, I guess those are pretty much the ones we got the feedback. Uh, you know, as I've said in the past, I think we've succeeded in making no one completely happy. Um, and we've taken a big step forward, I think, towards limiting the use of gas power leaf blowers. Uh, I think we have two come up kind of polar opposites, and some people want to be able to use whatever they want to use, and some people want to have a complete ban on any gas powered devices, period. Um, I think we have try to find something somewhat in the middle. Uh, we look at it as a starting ground. We can go either way from here. We, we're going to see how it works. Um, you know, trying to make everyone happy was impossible. So we tried to do what we thought was best while, you know, kind of uh, trying to limit bad behavior uh, while allowing the good behavior that people that behave well to continue. Um, and we'll see how it works. And I think that that's, that's the, uh, that's my, that our goal was to, to get something enacted. Uh, it's taken much longer than we thought. I think because we're listening, we're trying to be responsive to all of the um, comments that we've received. Some of them, are, you know, diametrically opposed, uh, which is obviously makes it hard. And it's not just a minority on either side. I think there's a, a large group on, on all sides of this issue. Um, I think the way leaf blowers are used is very different. Um, so I think we've tried to strike a balance over the last several months, um, and you know. This, is, this has been years in the works, but in the last several months that we've focused on it, I think we've we've made the law a lot better, uh, a lot more fair to everyone, uh, and we'll see how it works. You know, it's uh, I don't think we expect it to be perfect out of the gate, but I do think uh, we think it's going to be a, a, a pretty decent solution for everyone. Yeah, um, Ryan, did you want me to go over the tweaks that sure. were made since the last version? Ab absolutely. It, it, it wasn't really changed much from the version everybody saw. And we discussed at the last meeting just a couple of little mainly clarifications um there is the, the most i don't know most significant that the provision that says it gives the um date to the spring and fall cleanup periods that you can use them from eight to five that's in there but it wasn't entirely clear that the um on the one or two family properties that you could also during the spring cleanup use it during those hours and the same thing with the, in the multifamily houses so um, a, a clause was added sort of clause, yeah, a clause was added to each of them saying in addition to the spring and fall cleanup cleanups permitted by paragraph one above on one and two family you can um, use a leaf blower you know 30 for 30 minutes and then um, same thing on the multifamily so that was added to the beginning of each of them and then um, on the so the very last subsection on the gas powered leaf blowers it, it did say before that it had to be operated in accordance with manufacturers instructions and specs we added and maintained so that it's operated and maintained in accordance with them and then um, um, there was general discussion of, it, uh, of a, a noise level without any numbers put in uh, but, so we put in some numbers so for handheld or backpack leaf blowers a stop rated a noise level of 70 decibels or less until December 31st 2018 after which time the noise limit shall be 65 decibels according to the, AN the ANSI standards um, Um, I do have four pieces of correspondence uh, that I will read now. First is from Kathy Byfield. I just got back from a short trip and learned that the work session for leaf blower ban has been pro landscaper and that the pre-drafted dates, May 15th, September 15th, are up for reconsideration. Hope this is not the case, as it appears the board is considering the livelihood of landscapers over the own, their own tax-paying citizens. My husband and I are both filmmakers, filmmakers and professional TV editors. Perhaps this time I made a video to share on social media of what daily life is here, of what daily life here in Sparrow Park has become like. Subtitling my, subtitling my five-year-old in his own yard because you can't hear over the noise it might just be a more powerful image than pleading with the board again and again. It is 100% not fair that we have to put up with this air and noise pollution during the very times when people are outside the most, April, May, September, October. If anything, the dates of the ban should be changed to include all of May and September. 
Again, they are the two nicest months of the year. I hope the board is not does the right thing tonight and protects the kids in our village, not the welfare of greedy landscapers who can purchase the electric blowers or rakes. Uh, becoming further discouraged and appalled, I'm having to take this case to what I thought was a progressive neighborhood. Once again, leaf blowers cause hearing loss in children. To be clear, if we're not going to ban these machines, the board is putting leafless yards over the safety of our kids. Uh, sincerely, Kathy Byfield. Um, next is from Cesar Manfredi. What appears to be the latest version of the new leaf blower rules has an ex expiration of December 31st, 2018 for an exemption that would be useful to Half Moon South co-ops after storms when the cleaning of sidewalks is a matter of public safety. An earlier version did not have this expiration date. Why is there a need for the expiration? The need to clean the over one mile of sidewalks will not change December 31st, 2018. The alternate for cleaning sidewalks will be running the power lawnmower tractor over the sidewalks. Such an alternative, alternative would be more noisy with a bigger engine for a longer period of time since they move slower. In summary, the expiration of, 20, of December 31st, 2018 accomplishes nothing positive except more noise, more labor, less of a clean sidewalk, and less safety for the co-op. Keep in mind that the issue is the sidewalks and public safety, not the lawns and driveways. So take out the expiration date and the time restrictions, but limit the use to sidewalks and public safety in the exemption paragraph. Thank you for your further consideration. Cesar Manfredi, President of Half Moon South Co-ops. Uh, then Rick Rizzullo, in a related email, says, for what it's worth, I agree with Cesar to explore this ex ex to expire this exemption will surely jeopardize public safety in the future for hundreds of families in Irvington. This exemption will affect all residents living in co-ops, condos, and all multifamily communities throughout the village. Please reconsider the expiration and allow, ex and allow limited use on sidewalks and in ins instances of public safety. Thanks for your consideration. Rick Rizzullo, President 120 North Broadway Tenants Corp. Um, and then Warwick Norton. Um, writes, uh, if the national standard is of is ANSI 175.2, uh, then I believe very few of any gas power blowers available on the market will be below 65 decibels. Example, none of the currents still range. So effectively, you're banning all gas leaf blowers. It should also be noted that gas power leaf blower mowers are also above this noise level, so should they be banned also. I don't understand what's the difference between myself and my contractor using a leaf blower. I have an issue at this time of year, squirrels making a mess of my driveway from eating pine cones. This is a minimal job to clean up 10 minutes and much easier done by my contractor and not on a leaf blower. Please explain the reasoning. Regards, Norwood Norton. Um, and then the last one is from Stephanie Hardy. Um, she mentioned my quote, I think we've succeeded in making no one happy with this bill. It's not surprising, different parties have different values, yard services, most of which employ no Irvington residents want speed, efficiency, and most useful tools. Residents want peace and quiet, and homeowners, which are residents, want good looking greenery at an affordable price. Like many fellow Irvington residents, I work at home. I estimate the power equipment is in use nearby, close enough to distract and annoy, raise up to about 300 yards, up 40 to 50 percent of the 40 hour work week and often on Saturday. It's a lot of noise, noise that's, un that's unavoidable even indoors. Noise so bad that people can't sit outside and make a phone call. Let's call it what it is, noise pollution. Um, uh, well, it talks about fumes. Um, before we write regulations, we need to agree on some community values. We've dedicated an effective organization like the planning board and architecture review boards. Protector builds character and visual attractiveness. Zoning regulations protect the same common interest. The underlying idea is that protecting a common interest sometimes requires individual property owners to compromise. Burns is a community of um, chaos. My point is that we all enjoy and usually endorse activities that support community values because we perceive them as integral to our personal community interest. It's a lot of commitment um, to preserving our visual character. We should begin with a discussion of what audible character we want for Irvington. Uh, we cherish our views of the river and write regulations to protect views. We cherish peace and quiet. If so, let's regulate promoting that. This is another instance. This is about quality of life. It's important to remember that those interfering with quality of life or commercial interests trying to complete their work as efficiently as possible. But it's not impossible to do their work without power equipment, just less convenient for them. Um, he talks about dividing the, the neighborhood into, or he talks about dividing the neighborhood into broad neighborhoods, maybe eight, limit the use of power equipment to 12 hours per week, three, four hour slots. Uh, current proposals have a nine to five orientation that's too broad, especially for any noise pollution all day, every day. And, um, there are some who think that the number of blowers in use at one time as a property should be limited to one. My view is that more or better. Yes, the volume is greater, but the duration is shorter. Should prefer a half hour of nonstop noise or louder for 10 minutes, I'm for the latter. We changed that to two, by the way. Finally, no regulation is useful unless it's enforcement. Self-regulation only goes so far. All getting property owners revise their lawn service as a start, but people in the village will ultimately need to be the eyes and ears, which could create tension if neighbors report neighbors. Do we need a hotline, a web form? Unlike zoning regulations, 
No one is here only one minute and gone the next. There won't be proof of a violation other than the personal statement. And who in village government will be responsible for tracking down and finding violators? We need good regulations, but a specific enforcement plan may be even more important. Closing, let's favor reestablishing a comfortable audio character in the village. It's tempting to think about the details, but the bigger question is what we want for ourselves, how we restore the character. We've already lost the commercial interest. We've all lived without power blowers 25 years ago. We can live without them again. Corner Street for regular TV. Stephen Party. And those are the, uh, the, the letters we had. Um, the, as far as the responding to them briefly, the ANSI uh, standard, we have raised it to 70 uh, and then have it you know, going down you know, later on. Uh, I think our thought process there is they can upgrade to better equipment or you know, we think a lot of people might trans uh, move over to electric as well. And the, uh, the, the other thing is that these things um, don't usually last that long. Leaf blowers aren't, you know, for <laughs> years and years. So the guess is the things being used now will probably um, need to be replaced by the end of 2018 anyway. Um, as far as um, Caesar and uh, Rick's emails, um, I mean, I don't think we want to ever compromise public safety for this. I think that as we try this, we'll see if they can use either electric. Um, we do have the exemption for emergencies if there is a storm. Um, you know, so I, I, I'm hoping that there's a workable solution that can be found between the, the contractors, between the, you know, the supers of the buildings. Um, and if not, you know, uh, our, our, our meetings are always open, so we, we, can, we, can, we can visit that again. Those are my comments there. Yeah. Open up some public comment. Mm -hmm. Anybody has anything else now? Let's yeah. public comment, please. My name is Jeffrey Chester. I'm a member of the Board of Managers at Downingwood Condominiums. And I have a letter prepared by um, a lawyer who is also a member of our Board of Managers. On behalf of the 115 unit owners and residents of the Downingwood and Irvington Complex, we desire to protest the proposed local law regarding use of gas-powered leaf slash snowblowers. It appears to us that the village has inappropriately singled out condominiums restricting use of gas-powered leaf blowers. Such use within our condominium is tantamount to the similar use at tennis courts and golf clubs. In each of these cases, the nature of the entity is such that neighboring residents not affiliated with the condominium would not be affected adversely by the use of such gas-powered blowers. Our condominium, as well as others, is a multi-acre, uh, actually it's 35 acres, uh, development that does not, as a rule, border upon private homes. Most of Downingwood has buffer space or woodland at its uh, borders. We believe an amendment to the local law is in order. It appears prejudicial to single out condominiums while providing greater use by single family dwellings. Clearly, logic and experience dictate that single family dwellings are more likely to interfere noise wise with their neighbors than a condominium that is naturally buffered from the rest of the area. We accordingly request that the local law be amended or not approved in its present form. Sincerely, Downingwood Board of Managers. I'd like to offer this letter to the village clerk. Please. Anyone else? Please. Timmy Downey from Hastings, and Hudson, New York, also a local landscape contractor. Um, I've only heard this evening, and I'll take the time to fully read the newest version or the final version that you're considering. I'm in favor of what you're doing, by and large. Um, the only th thing I'd like to see spoken differently about this is to stop pointing the finger at a device called a blower. Uh, I'd like to hear since it wasn't expressed this evening, what the village may be doing in terms of the conversation that was had regarding registering contractors and trying to do the educational process. I think the full court press has to be applied to not only the contractors, the users, homeowners who use the equipment, but homeowners or associations that employ services. There has to be a broad educational um, effort put forth where we change the conduct of those individuals who are out there, the labor force, using these machines. It is never the machine that is the problem. No more than it is the, when we, there was consideration of 
people who use alcohol inappropriately and get behind the wheel of a car, they don't say it's an alcohol <coughs> problem, they say it's an individual responsibility problem. Um, same as in, in this case here. We have to examine the people, the labor force that are using machines. The comment earlier of their, these machines weren't used 25 years ago is inaccurate. As many of the statements I hear from people who do not do this work, who just do a little uh, research online and then have their opinions and they try and broad brush it like it's fact, more often than not, they're absolutely wrong in terms of how they express their opinions. But I'd like to see the sides come together to have a more civil, um, well-mannered community because I agree it's out of control with the way these machines are used. Um, I'd like to hear the, if it's possible if the board could respond, are they still going to do that effort to do the educational process and to um, try and change the conduct of the people who are using this piece of equipment? Because again, if we don't address that, you have mayhem in the spring, you have mayhem in the fall, and from the homeowner's perspective, or the property owner's perspective, there should be understanding that we don't have to blow every little petal of grass or leaf across our property. Just clear the sidewalks, make them safe, clear the driveways, make them presentable, the front stoop, and let the rest be. There has to be a change in, in how um, this is defined. Thank you for your time and listening we, to my comments. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. We actually have our, our first draft of the, uh, of the, of the, uh, legis the legislative draft to um, start registration process for landscapers. Um, we have a uh, draft card that we're going to be handing out. There's going to be a whole bunch of, well, there'll be several at least, inf you know, informational, educational things they have to sign off on before they're going to get their, their permits. Um, the permit fee is going to be very low. Again, this isn't a revenue generator. This is more of an educational tool. Um, and, you know, to have something that we can kind of, you know, hold over them if they don't behave well. Because I, I do think that, um, I will say actually 100% of the complaints we receive are about landscapers, not about individual homeowners. Um, and it's, I, I don't think it's ironically, but uh, and that includes people at uh, condominium complexes, um, people at co-op complexes as well that are complaining that they felt like they're trapped by their co-ops and their condo boards, that this is the way that their landscapers said they have to do it, and that's the way they do it. You know, I, I actually think that if the landscapers had been behaving themselves, we never even heard about this, because I agree with you, it can be a five minute shot, it's quick, it's easy. Um, it's just when you see them go from place to place to place, they, you know, they have four houses on one side of the street, they go around them. Um, I think they can just do it a lot smarter in a lot shorter amount of time, and they don't have to blow every single leaf of grass, as you say. So I think that's a big part of this is gonna be education, because there is still a lot of time where leaf blowers could be gas powered or, or otherwise could be used. Um, so, you know, I think it has to come down to changing behavior just like it does for a lot of things like the slowdown Irvington and all those things. So, um, that is the big second phase of this. The reason that this came before the registration is simply because we want to get something in the books before this period closes. Um, we had hoped to get this done, you know, in June, uh, but we had to keep tweaking it, um, you know, as we, as we kind of receive more and more comments. So. Mr. Mayor? <coughs> Mr. Mayor and Board, um, I'd be happy to be available if any way I can provide any help or support in terms of the wording and drafting of this, as I did years ago with uh, uh, Trustee Gilliland with the whole Love and Leaving program. I offer my assistance in any fashion I can to help create a dialogue that connects the, the interests of both parties. And, and we, we've so far had a positive response from, from several landscapers that, that kind of say, we're the good guys here, and we think it's a you know a small group of, of kind of you know bad bad actors. Um, so I, I think that that was very positive to me. I thought there'd be a lot of pushback from the from the landscaping community, and there's not. Um, you know, so I think that that's it's all positive, and I think that that's an important next step, and we plan to act on that as soon as possible as well. Who's next? Please. <coughs> My name is Charlotte Eisler. Uh, I'm here basically for some clarification. I wasn't able to be there when you had the working meetings, which I know you had. So what isn't quite clear to me is you speak of leaf blowers. Does any of this refer to cutting grass regularly, which is also done with gas blow machines? Does it, it affect those? It does not just not now. Just and just leaf blowers. So that if like myself, I have somebody come once a week, they're never here more than half an hour, that is okay Absolutely. to come during the hours requested. And um, 
Then I understood there was going to be a change from gas blowers to electric blowers. That is not being implemented at this time. Is that right? There's never a ban on electric. You can use electric. Yes, but I mean, there's no ban on the gas. Uh, there's, there's no outright ban right now. So they are permitted for the time being. And within the windows. Right. Yeah, within, within the limits, within the limits of the law. Okay, and so basically, I think this refers more to bigger contractors who uh, work in larger developments. Kind of not really. Yeah. It, for a certain period of time, they're not allowed to use leaf blowers. They can use they can do all their other equipment other than gas powered leaf blowers. They can use electric leaf blowers. They can use lawn mowers. They can use edgers. They can, you know, there's. But my gardeners can use the gas. Not not during not during the, the date specified. Basically, in the summer months, they cannot use gas-powered leaf blowers. They can use electric leaf blowers, and they can use them during the spring cleanup and the fall cleanup, but not during the summer. And that applies to, to grass cutting as well. No, grass cutting is yes. only leaf blowers, only electric, only only, only gas-powered leaf blowers. Everything else is fine. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? I mean, we've heard from dozens of people on this through the month, months long process. Um, you know, again, I hope we got it 80% right because I think we'll have done a good job. Um, you know, I think for the uh, the larger properties, uh, Downingwood and Field Point have both raised the same concern. Um, you know, it's not it's not that you know you, you just have to. I think you just have to change the way, at least in the beginning, how you how you're going to look at this process. Uh, you talk to your contractors. If you if it turns out that there, it's impossible to keep your your uh, your complexes clean and you know your people are worried about falling on sidewalks and things like that, we'll be happy to deal with it again. This isn't a, it isn't like we passed the law and it's going to be gone. We can always we can always reexamine it. Um, but I think that you know we feel like we have to get we feel like we want something on the books to to address the overall noise issues. Uh, you know there's not a, we're, our windows closing here rapidly. It's almost the fall cleanup. Um, so, you know, I think that, uh, you know, while we definitely hear what you're saying, um, you know, I, I personally, I, I think we can still move forward this time with the law. Um, and I think I'm, I'm happy to close the uh, public hearing. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the only thing that I think that, uh, that I've heard that's worth considering, and I've thought about it quite a bit, but I don't see how it, it actually works out better, is the idea of having neighborhood zones. You know, it's, it's, it's like there's it's an interesting recycling idea. zones in the village, but I think that that result is that it actually doesn't solve the problem. It just creates it, shifts it, because you'll still you're still going to have, you know, if if you have to let's say Sparrow Park allow two times a week where it's used, you know, I'm not sure uh, for three to four hours. I'm not sure if that's really going to be any different than where it is now. Yeah, because you normally have one landscaper coming in and handling like a, a half a block of properties all in one time because they've, they've come to the neighborhood, they go through it, so they're actually going to be working for two to three hours in that neighborhood, so it's effectively the same thing. It's just a question of, I guess, how you draw those boundaries if you can fragment it well enough to... Uh, but it just seems... I, I can't figure out how you would actually... quite how you would implement it and how you would analyze it to implement it properly. Yeah, I think it would take a lot more thought. And if, you know, if this doesn't work, maybe we can examine that. But uh, It's the edge between the... Where they meet, be, yeah, between the, the, the non-smoking area and... <laughs> I, I, I agree with uh, Mark's comment. Uh, there were a lot of good... That idea, there were a lot of good ideas that came out of the public through this whole process. Um, and I think it also highlighted the the whole issue of noise pollution, that, that's, a, that's a pretty important issue. It's a very important issue. And we talk about visual, um, you know, preserving visual things, but, you know, I've, I, I, I think that awareness um, will move us to first, as, as, as the mayor said, we are moving forward with this registration. And the component of that that's educational um, is a really important piece. I think what Mark has done, you know, you'll all see some versions of a little card, an education piece 
about courtesy and common sense um, can go a long way. Um, so that's a, an important piece. But I mean, I've said this for nine years, the enemy of the, of the good is the perfect. So if we try to craft this for another five months to make this first step perfect, um, I think, you know, we'll just drive ourselves crazy in the, the public. Um, nope, nobody will be happy with that either. So I'm, I'm happy with moving forward. Uh, I know we've, we've talked about it for a long time. I agree. I think that there's a point where making, trying to make sure we've captured every possible thought and every possible comment becomes a little bit like chasing the last leaf down the driveway with the leaf <laughs> um, We knew when we started this, this was not going to be perfect. Um, I think we've listened carefully to all the comments, and I think the mayor has said over and over again, this is not something that can't be revisited. Of course we can. Um, the idea is, there was a wonderful op-ed piece in last Saturday's Times called what local government is about is about what we owe each other. And we all live here together, and there are different interests, and there are sometimes competing interests, and how do we do our best to balance it, knowing that we can't achieve perfection. This is a really good shot, and I think we should go forward with it and not wait any longer. I would just add that um, I think that we've made a big dent in uh, slowing down the usage you know, compared to what we had before, which was nothing. <laughs> Um, limiting amount of time and amount of uh, numbers of leaf blowers which can be used. Um, you know, it's my hope that by our sunset date of December 31st of 18, that we'll have seen a change in behavior, both on the part of the contractors and how they use their leaf blowers, perhaps on the part of homeowners and what they want from their lawns and you know how they want their lawns to look, uh, and hopefully an improvement in battery-operated leaf blowers, which will allow us to perhaps have a total ban by 1231, so when we review this. Yeah, and I, and I, I, I will add that while we're, I, I'd say kind of, uh, we're definitely not new to this idea. Uh, several of our neighbors have had these for years, and you know, they've, they've been able to figure it out. Their, their landscapers have continued to figure it out. Um, I will add that Greenberg, and I don't know if it's always good to have Greenberg do what you do, but uh, Greenberg is looking to use our law as their model law, uh, because I think we did kind of try to find that compromise, because they, again, they have the same groups of opposed uh, folks, so. Uh, but, you know, I think that, you know, if the contractors can't figure it out, they can talk to someone who's, you know, Hastings has had a ban for a while. Uh, it doubts, it doubts very has, has a ban. A more significant um, ban, actually. Yes, less some of them are a lot more, a uh, lot, lot more strict, so. Um, Just so you understand, in those communities that you're referencing with the ban, blowers are used every day, every day of the week. They just do it more carefully, more responsibly. But it's impossible to maintain properties for a three month period without the use of it on a driveway or walkway and so forth. So it's, when you're referencing other communities, it's not like they're not using it. They use them every single day. Everyone plays hide and seek. Breaking the law, I guess. Yeah, it's a necessity. Yeah. Well, I, I would say again, you know, what what really has, you know, come to my attention, and I actually have a serious hearing loss myself. It didn't wasn't caused by by leaf blowers, but the idea of, of noise pollution in general and the quality of life, I think we've we've really just begun to look at what effect that has on all the people that now work at home and. Um, it's it's something that I hope we pay attention to as we go forward. I think we will. I just want to say one thing, Connie. It's important to, to make a nod also to the other kinds of pollution that yeah. are caused. Not just you know there is particulate pollution caused oh, yeah. by the gas engines that can cause uh, you know been shown to cause asthma conditions in children. But also you got the problem um, in some studies, and you got the problem of uh, just the use of it, uh, kicking up a lot of um, uh, dirt and uh, surface material off of uh, garden beds or whatever, uh, off of pavement, and that also creates uh, a vector for asthma. Yeah, yeah, I, so I realize that. Yeah, I, I, rem I, I think I've like six or seven years I've been reading about all that effect, the, the asthma and all that, and I fully agree that there's a special place for leaf blowers <laughs> as problematic. Um, but it, ha it has brought to mind the broader question of, of noise, not just with landscapers, but noise overall. So that's a, a very big um, 
Not that we can solve that. Not that we can solve that. Tonight. No, and we're certainly not going to try. So I will, I will <laughs> it's Larry's birthday. I'll make, make a motion to close the public hearing. Yes, but I got a second. second. Yes. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Now I'll make a motion to uh, approve the amendment to Chapter 148 nuisances of the Irvington Code to limit the use of leaf blowers. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks everyone for their, and, and, yeah, I think the one thing I, I should have mentioned before we close the hearing was I was very impressed with the civil tone of, of the, and the, the intelligence of the, uh, the correspondence, the, um, you know, the people that showed up to uh, express their opinion either way. Um, you know, I think it was a great example of the way things should be done. Um, you know, we didn't have name calling. We didn't have, like, have a hyperbole. We, we just had kind of people trying to figure out the right answer. We had some hyperbole. Uh, passion. But, passion. But we, uh, you know, I think we, again, we, we, we came to a compromise, good. and we'll see if it works. And if it does, we'll, we'll work on it. I, I agree. One thing about that, though, there were too many long and well thought out and well reasoned letters that came in very late in this process. We've been on this for months. Mm -hmm. And so to get a piece of correspondence that says, I just heard about this, and here's <laughs> six pages of what I think you should do, you know, it, Really, people get on the mailing list. And if it's we're, not and hard. we're really, uh, if there's other yes. ways to be reached, we're we're happy. We're open to those suggestions as well because it's, it's the thing we struggle with the most. Uh, you know, we get no matter how many weeks and months we talk about things, so we're always accused of trying to sneak something by. So. <laughs> Maybe we should do uh, Morse code using the fire alarm. Everyone hears that. <laughs> Stop bringing that up, please. <laughs> um, <laughs> next is volunteer appointments to the Irvington Woods Committee. Any discussion here? No. Otherwise, resolve to appoint the following members of the Irvington Woods Committee for term expired 20, December 2017, Eric uh, Fenterstock, Catherine Kane, Kimberly Michigan, Leslie Seary, Terry Tosi, and Josh Selector. I'll make the motion. Got a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I will, I will add that uh, Joe is absolutely glowing in his, his uh, praise for the uh, Irvington Woods Committee. What a pleasure they are to deal with, and uh, what a great job they're doing. So thank you to those yeah, members. And one, two, three, four, five, six and people stepping up. Yeah, there's, I assume there's a lot more on the committee, so thank you to all of you. Yes, do. Next is approval of contract 2017-14 with Bar Down Studio for Architectural <laughs> Services. Great name. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, the... Uh, contract that you had in front of you was, and the one that was published on Friday was was replaced. Uh, this is contract for architectural services for uh, two sets of repairs over at the Irvington Firehouse. One is for roof replacement and the other is for window replacement. Um, and these are to prepare um, bid level documents uh, to move forward with that project, those projects. Um, the uh, replacement here is that the uh, at the end of last week, uh, the, it was determined that the roofing material has asbestos, uh, which is not uncommon. Um, but in order to proceed, we need to have a set of specifications prepared by a certified, uh, a person certified to prepare such sets of specifications for the removal of the asbestos. Um, and so that increased the proposal about 13, a little over $13,000. So it's a cost of doing business, but we do have money set aside for the design and the repairs over there, but this uh, slows us down and costs us a little bit more. You know, I've got, was, uh, I'm very glad we're getting this work done. Uh, I was actually just talking to some of the, the firefighters about this, and they were kind of asking what's going on with kind of the, uh, you know, the, the window replacement and things like that. And, you know, I think we had hopes in a, you know, in a, in a perfect world, we would be talking about a, a large um, renovation and, and getting it up to, to kind of the current <laughs> acceptable levels for fire departments. But when our uh, consultant came back and it was, you know, a, a one year's worth of annual budget just to get it not even all the way up to code, it didn't really make sense. You know, $15 million to not get you what you want doesn't make sense. So um, in the interim, I think we have to do something with the windows and the roof. Uh, the roof is actually leaking. Um, but we had to make, you know, temporary repairs, and the windows are just, you know, just old, <laughs> and they're leaky. So, well, uh, this is this is a good step, Larry. Anyone have any questions on this? Or? But this is, oh, thank you. This is bid level, right? We don't know what the project is going to run. No, no. That's, that'll be developed as we go along. <laughs> 
Result to approve contract 2017-14 with Bar Down Studio for architectural services for the renovation of the existing fire department building located at 90 Main Street, authorizing the village administrator to execute said proposal. I'll make a motion. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I mean, I assume these people came with a good recommendation. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, you have any coffee? Firehouse. Oh, probably. Right now. Yeah. Hello? Okay. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Make a mess. The approval, uh, <laughs> the world contract 2017 12 for joint paving. Okay, so the. Uh, this is something that uh, those of you who have been on the board for some time know that we've been involved with uh, bidding out our uh, paving work uh, jointly with the other villages in Greenberg. Um, uh, this is an effort that has, uh, that, as I said, been going on at least probably five or six years or more. The uh, village of Irvington for the last couple of years has been um, coordinating the bidding process. So we, we've assisted with accumulating all the requirements from the other villages. Uh, we put out the bid, um, received the bids, and you're being asked to evaluate the bids, which you have in front of you from our engineer. Um, and uh, only a, a relatively small portion of the dollars that are bid here are uh, our village of Irvington expense, just so, <laughs> right. just so you recognize, it's a three point five million dollar contract, and we're, <laughs> we're paving about two hundred thousand dollars this year. Um, so, uh, who's the big one? Uh, Hastings is doing a lot of work, and uh, maybe Terry Town as well. Um, uh, maybe Ardsley is the other one. Ardsley and Hastings. Um, so there is a, a bit of a wrinkle here in the bids that were received. It's it's described in the resolution, but just to quickly give you an overview, um, the low bidder was, was some $500,000 lower than the second low bidder. Um, the other bidders were in, in a similar range, except for, yeah, a similar range. Um, the low bidder uh, withdrew their bid. They uh, claimed that they made a mistake, um, an error in the way they bid it, and um, they wanted to renegotiate, which we, the consortium did not agree to. Um, so we requested that they either honor the price or it's considered withdrawn and, and they didn't uh, affirmatively <coughs> honor the price. So it's withdrawn. Um, and so the second low bidder is being recommended. Our engineers fully vetted them um, and are satisfied with their, with their bid. The only other thing I'll add, Larry, is that over the years, um, the villages have saved you know millions of dollars uh, by joint bidding. Um, it was one of the. It's, it's definitely not easy to coordinate at all, but we found that we have you know the same or as, you know or even some even better quality work um, and you know significant savings. I mean, the first year it was it was like jaw dropping almost. <laughs> yeah, and and look, the village is, is only doing two hundred thousand dollars of paving this year. To bid out a two hundred thousand dollar contract, you wouldn't get. Um, the type of paving companies that we're getting here that do larger volumes and, and better prices. So, and, and I, I do think too, it's um, I, mean, I found it, obviously the price savings are the, are the driver, but um, having the evaluation of, of six villages, very big spot, um, kind of getting the, their input on it also. Like you know, which we had one road where the, you know it wasn't perfect, and I think that that's been. Uh, it's been really interesting, you know, really valuable as well. Even if it's not just a, it's not just the dollars and cents, but it's also the kind of shared experience, uh, you know. And so I, I think it's been a it's been a great example of, of what shared services can do. So the, the resolution tonight is to approve is to award the bid to to the second low bidder. As it turns out, uh, we you will also authorize the uh, the village to enter into a contract for our share of it. And of course, the other villages need to do the same. Um, and piggyback on this bid. I think the other thing I was surprised about, you know, back when we first started doing this five or six years ago, was the uh, scheduling was not an issue. That was my biggest concern, was that, you know, we'd all want to have the second week in August and we wouldn't be able to do it. But it hasn't actually ever come to pass that that's really been an issue. Uh, there's been, you know, some times where, oh, you need another day or something, but it's not, it hasn't been, a, it's definitely, you know, the cost-benefit analysis is, yeah. is, is not even something to have to look at. Yeah, and, and there are there are certain times where certain villages on certain roads need to have things done at a certain time, and we put that information in, into the bid. Um, 
but you don't have a, a blanket statement. I mean, certainly Irvington, we've, un unless it's in a critically sensitive area that needs to be done while school's out, for example, like Dow's Lane, you know, that would be a perfect one to not do in October, you know, <laughs> um, you know just as an example. So, but for the most part, we're, we can handle it pretty much any time of year up until the middle of November. I think it's a compliment to, to all the villages, to, to their mayors and their administrators, that they're able to organize this and, and save everybody money um, and get quality service. Whereas the villages, the village of Irvington is a cooperative relationship with the villages of Ardsley, Dobbsbury, Elmsford, Hastings, and Tarrytown, has solicited bids for the milling and resurfacing of various streets, adjusting manholes, and concrete curbing in the village of Irvington and partner municipalities referenced above. And whereas a public notice for this project bid was duly advertised in the official newspaper on June 8, 2017, and where and whereas at 11 a.m. on June 28, 2017, at Irvington Village Hall. All bids received were opened as summarized below, as summarized below. And whereas, because PCI Industries Corporation would not honor the bid base amount in the bid opening, PCI Industries Corporation has withdrawn their bid. And whereas, after reviewing the remaining bids submitted, the Village of Irvington Village Administrator and Village Engineer conclude ELQ Industries Inc. is the lowest responsible bidder for the work based upon the award of the base bid. Whereas following the unit values bid in the contract and the extended totals based upon the engineer's estimates of the work to be performed in the village of Irvington, the value of the work is $202,235 with the balance of the contract value for work apportioned to the villages of Ardsley, Dobbsbury, Elmsford, Hastings, and Tyretown collectively summing to $3.523. Two four six point eight zero million, and whereas in accordance with the contract, each partner municipality will separately authorize the contract and be responsible for payment of services performed within the respective municipality directly to the contractor. <laughs> and now, therefore, be it resolved that the village board of trustees of the village of Irvington hereby awards the contract for the work to be formed for the 2017 milling, resurfacing, and replacement of curbing on various streets in the village of Irvington to ELQ Industries, Inc., in accordance with their unit prices contained in the bid of June 28, 2017, for the work to be performed within the village of Irvington and five other villages, and to authorize the village administrator to execute said contract. I will make the motion. I can have a second. Read it again. <laughs> Certain part. Have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is authorizing submission of a grant application for the Hudson View Park culvert replacement. Well, um, we are working on uh, and we'll be diving into the design of a replacement of a culvert under Hudson View Park, which is just off of the Sunnyside Lane. Um, the project is a, a fairly complicated project in that it crosses underneath um, and over three pieces of private property in addition to the village road. Um, the project is uh, estimated to be approximately 750000 and we are pursuing a grant application in the amount of 300000 uh, so a little less than 50%, through the uh, New York State Consolidated Funding Application Process. Uh, it's specifically a uh, Climate Smart Communities grant, uh, which is, uh, you know, looking, one of their parameters is um, widening of, of streams uh, culverts that handle streams like this uh, in anticipation of uh, larger flooding events in the future. That's the, the concept. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll be uh, frank about it. It's a long shot, um, but we're going to give it a try and we'll learn from it and we'll go back again if we have to. Great. I mean, this is a project that's been in the thinking for, I don't know, I would yeah. say years, but. Yeah, we had, we had. A, $200,000 a year mark for it through the Community Development Block Grant Program, yeah. which, which was then lost uh, as a result of the ongoing uh, dispute between the county and the federal government. So we're trying to replace that. And uh, as, as it's an important project to the neighborhood. This is, there's one way in and one way out to the Hudson View Park neighborhood. And uh, this stream has had a propensity to flood and wash out the roadway. Your a good project. Hope we get it. Whereas the village of Irvington is applying to the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation for a grant under the 2017 Climate Smart Communities Grant Program for a project entitled Hudson View Park Culvert Replacement in the Village of Irvington. 
And whereas the grant application requires the applicant of the municipality to obtain the approval and endorsement of the governing body of the municipality in which the project will be located. And whereas cost estimates totaling, totaling $750,000 have been prepared for the project. And whereas the village will provide a match equal to 60% of the total project cost. Now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Trustees hereby does authorize submission for an application for a $300,000 grant of the 2017 Climate Smart Communities Grant Program for the Hudson View Park Culvert Replacement Project and upon a award of such request, commits the master grant with $450,000 in order to implement the project and further resolve that the village administrator is hereby authorized to take any and all such steps that are necessary to effectuate the intent of this resolution. I will make a motion and I have a second. second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. We actually have a 12A, so if you're you know, not ready to report, you have another eight seconds. <laughs> um, this is a removal and appointment to the Route 9 Corridor Study Steering Committee. Uh, we were adding uh, Leola and we were taking off Mark. So they're both in the room, which makes it exciting. Had <laughs> um, some cookies, too. Leola actually uh, is, raised her hand and said she was very willing to attend these meetings for us. Um, the other folks that are actually been that were appointed um, they're all super busy not, not that they all is it um, but they were they've been unable to attend the first couple of meetings so we're glad that we have someone that uh, has the time and desire to attend the meetings on our behalf so thank you thanks for stepping up whereas on august 15 2016 board of trustees selected a committee to represent the village of Worthington on the route nine corridor study steering committee now, therefore, be resolved to remove Mark Gilliland as a member of this committee and appoint the list. How do I say your last name? Yeah, right? Right, right, yeah. Good. As a member of the term to expire December 2017. I will make the motion. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Uh, yeah, voting against the mark. You want to stay on? I guess I should have said that. No. So this very is very equal talk. Reports of boards, standing committees, and officers. Trustee liaison report. I don't yep. have anything right now. Okay. Want to look at our work insurance class? Larry? <laughs> 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 right. The Irvington Woods Committee will meet on Thursday, July 20th at 7 p.m. in the Ohio Nature Center. Day camp and Teamscape are rolling along. Teamscape started session two already today, and camp season's almost half over, mm -hmm. and enrollment in both is excellent. The Spray Pool and yes. Memorial yes. Park on Station Road is open Monday through Friday from 2 to 4. Park passes are required. Visit the Irvington Woods website, theirvingtonwoods.org. The O'Hara Nature Center Summer League is running Monday through Thursday in Cena Cutson starting at 6. Don't feed the geese. <laughs> the Dogs on Leash program continues. You can contact the rec department with any questions. That's it. That's it. Um, so, so Larry Blanke, um, I noticed that there there are kayak uh, spaces available still, right, at Matheson? It looked like they're not filled like they I were think in the, the years past. Yes, well, I think um, the boat club has yeah, they expanded have, their, yeah. their kayak availability, um, and spaces are still available. So that's good to know for people who might want that. I just noticed that. Um, I would also, I mean, as the... Um, the farmer's market um, is still functioning very successfully despite all the equipment that's parked. Um, I was there on, on Sunday, as probably many of you were, um, and they're working around the tractors and earth-moving equipment, and it was still packed, and people seemed perfectly happy, so I'm glad they could work around that. Um, Greg Nelson's uh, DPW report is they've been trimming around traffic signs. They've been actually replacing and adding traffic signs. Uh, they've repaired a broken curb on South Buckout, a sinkhole on West Clinton. That sounds serious. Um, they assisted the Parks Department um, with hauling material and assisted the Water and Sewer Department with a broken sewer pipe on West Clinton. Replaced a fire hydrant on Valley View Road catch basins and crosswalk painting. And the water department, uh, as always, they're reading water meters. They do maintenance in the, in the summer of facilities. Um, they jetted Roland Road sewer. Um, and there's a mention again of some of the same things. Jetted and videotaped sewer line on Lewis Road. 
That should be interesting. <laughs> um, jetted and videotaped a sewer line on Station Road in South Bucket. Um, Fleet Pump performed maintenance on the Legend Hollow Pump Station and painting of fire hydrants. That's my report. Just a point of interest, one of the reasons for clearing the whole age around the signs is because the court reported that people were contesting tickets because they couldn't read the signs. So this is a wonderful example of village agencies working in tandem. Uh, the other report I have is from the fire department. In June, the Irvington Volunteer Firefighters responded to 28 calls for fire and rescue, 178 calls as of June 30th for the years. Um, department training, Tuesday, June 6th, 20 Irvington firefighters encountered live smoke and fire conditions in the burn simulator building under the guidance of county instructors. The emphasis of the initial interior fire attack was search, search and rescue. Terratime firefighters also participated. Water rescue training on Tuesday, June 13th. 10 firefighters operated Marine 4 on Hudson River, conducted site survey of the new TZ project construction zone, and practiced boat operations for new members. Tuesday, June 20th, 17 firefighters, along with Dobbs Ferry, continue to build on past training evolutions using live fire attack simulator at the county fire training center. Maintenance sets of firefighter protective gear to continue to be sent out for professional cleaning and inspection. In other events, 13 firefighters attended, marched, and won a trophy in the Hudson Valley Volunteer Firefighters Convention. Oh. Congratulations <laughs> to all the guys. Thank you. Uh, village administrator's report. Just a quick um, update on the town hall building. Um, the storm windows are expected to be delivered Wednesday, and then uh, over the course of the following two weeks or so, they'll be uh, installed. And as they do install on either side of the building, the west side and the east side, the scaffolding will be removed. The front scaffolding will remain because there still are pieces of terracotta that are and anticipated to come certain key pieces so they're doing everything they can do waiting for the uh, additional pieces um, you know timing overall is there's there's a chance everything could be done by the end of August um, but I say that with some hesitation because some of the you know if there's one key piece of terracotta that doesn't come in quite right that would delay things so again their contractors doing a very good job keeping on top of that and organizing all that but that's the current timing. Thank you. Is there anything uh, just in general you might say about the aqueduct crossing project? I mean, everybody's noticing it, I think. Yeah, what do you think? Um, I think. They're, they've come out of the gate pretty quick. Um, and, you know, we, we only have a two week look ahead when this is our second of our two weeks. And uh, they'll, they're going to continue doing their site work. They're working as much as they possibly can next to the school parking lot while school's closed. Um, and then they'll start moving over to the monument area. Um, also one of note is on the uh, southern end of the, the uh, parking lot, which is the, the aqueduct parking lot that the village owns. Um, we are getting prices to repair and re replace the guardrail, which is in poor condition. This is outside of the scope of the project, but still with some of the funds that are budgeted. Um, we're also going to be doing some uh, landscaping work at the very southern end of the parking lot to remove some of the overgrown brush that's there uh, to repair the handrail and to improve some of the uh, on and off experience of people walking from the aqueduct down to Croton Place. All right, the slip and slide. Yeah. So there's a few other improvements that are happening, happening kind of simultaneously Thank for all of this. Did we decide on what, what the crosswalk is going to be like as part of the aqueduct crossing? Yes. It's... Uh, Mark could draw it for you, <laughs> <laughs> or I can show you the picture. <laughs> um, is it raised or is it just different? It's not. It's not raised, but it's brick. Mm -hmm. So, it, and the brick pattern is such that it's there's there's uh, white lines going across the street, and then there's alternating red and white stripes going uh, as the as the pedestrian would go, and that's all done in a brick pattern. I'm sure I have a picture somewhere. Well, I'm sure I saw the picture. Yes. <laughs> Will the clerk treasurer's report? Nothing tonight. Will the attorney's report? Nothing quick. Public comment. Yeah. Review of action items. Yeah. Anyone have any? I didn't have any. I think an action item would be eat a cookie, right? <laughs> Before you go. 
no. Take I, home a cookie. I mean, I have a few notes to myself, but not, they're not action items. Got to, got to get you this, right? Got to get you the update to this. That's the, my action item. Yeah. I'll make a motion to adjourn. If I can have a second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Uh,